Do you, uh, like fish? I'm actually a vegetarian. So... <laughs> right. I like them when they're alive. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna see if you just wanted to grab a early dinner. Uh, but seeing as you're... Do you know what? I can make a really good vegetarian version. That sounds great. <laughs> good, yeah, good. Thank Sold. you. Done. Do you want me to grab anything else? Uh, some vegetables. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> This is Michael Faulkner, and it is showtime at the May 29th, 2018 edition of the Weekly Podioplex. Brought to you on the Chronic Grip Network. Starting with the box house report, it's week 21 of 2018, and it is an interesting tale to tell. Overall, this year's 21st week is 7th all-time, earning $176.5 million across the top 12 and coming in behind the releases of a couple of X-Men flicks, the third parts of the Caribbean film, The Hangover Part 2, and fellow Star Wars alum Revenge of the Sith. The four-day holiday weekend earned $219.9 million behind that same crowd. In comparison to recent years, however, this year's Memorial Day weekend was the best performance since 2014 and X-Men Days of Future Past. So the top performer is kind of a win-lose situation. Let's get this countdown rolling with number 10, an RBG, up two spots from 12th with 40 more screens. At number 9 is A Quiet Place, down one from 8th. At 8th is Overboard, down one from 7th. In 7th is Show Dogs, down one from 6th and apparently unaffected by family group boycotting. And capping the bottom 5 is Breaking In, down one from 5th. The top 5 continues the pattern with Life of the Party down one from fourth with $6.9 million, added to a total of $40.9 million. In fourth place is Book Club, down one from third with $13.1 million and a total of $35.3 million. In third place is Avengers Infinity War, down one from second with $22.5 million and a total of $627.6 million. In second is last week's winner, Deadpool 2, adding $53.8 million to a total of $218.5 million. And in first is Solo, a Star Wars story, premiering to $84.4 million over three days and $103 million over four. On one hand, the first place performance was unsurprising. On the other, it's disappointing against expectations. The film cost $300 million after firing the Lord and Miller directorial team hiring Ron Howard to write the ship, and basically re-scripting and reshooting the film. Disney entered the holiday weekend expecting a $130 to $150 million payday, but as the weekend played out, their expectations slid down. The international numbers aren't helping much either. The offered reasons why are various and complicated, ranging from what are people are calling franchise fatigue and poor marketing to evidence that Lucasfilm has expended their goodwill with fans and general audiences. I don't buy the franchise fatigue much, but what is obvious through all the arguing is that no one has a grasp on the complete story. Disney and Lucasfilm need to find that story and untangle things sooner rather than later. Audiences gave it an A- cinema score, and critics settled between a 62 and 71% approval. I gave it a 7 out of 10 score, mostly driven by the lackluster story highlighted by Donald Glover's Lando Calrissian, D.B. Waller Bridges L3, and the entire Kessel sequence from landing to explosive finale. There are a lot of fantastic mythological ties, but the rough edges are pretty obvious, and I really think it needed more polish before release. The box house premieres for June 1st are fighting the maelstrom and the maw with a hurricane. This week's headliner is Adrift, an adventure drama starring Shailene Woodley, Sam Clayton, and Grace Palmer.
Based on the true story of survival, a young couple's chance encounter leads them first to love and then on the adventure of a lifetime as they face one of the most catastrophic hurricanes in recorded history. Adrift is rated PG-13. Number two on the list is Action Point, a comedy starring Johnny Knoxville, Bridget Lundy Payne, and Susan Yeagley. That looks fun. Your mom ever tell you it's your old papa home on the greatest amusement parks of all time? Those days were different. There weren't so many rules. Your mom would come for the summer. Boogie! Hi! Oh, baby doll! Even back then, she was the voice of reason. You're the lifeguard. Shouldn't we be facing the water? Ah, let God sort them out. Ah! <laughs> A daredevil designs and operates his own theme park with his friends. Action Point is rated R. And number three on the list is Upgrade. An action thriller starring Logan Marshall Green. Richard Anastasios and Roscoe Campbell. Let me know if you need my help, Graves. Stop! Help! I need your permission to operate independently. Permission granted! Oh. Thank you. Uh. Um, okay, uh... What, what, what are we doing, man? Just relax. Oh, God, dear. Oh, look, man, stay down, please. Um, please, please don't get up. Please don't get up. Please. Stay down, man. Just stay. Sam, he's got a knife! Sam! I can see that. We have a Trying to piss him off? Okay. All right, so what's the plan? What are we doing? Ah! Ah! Stop! Ah! Stop him! Ah! Ah! You now have full control again, Gray. Set in the near future, technology controls nearly all aspects of life, but when Gray, a self-identified technophobe, has his world turned upside down, his only hope for revenge is an experimental computer chip implant called STEM. Upgrade is rated R. There are also three titles on this week's Limited Slate, and you can find those in the show notes. Next up is a look at the Home Entertainment Slate for the week of May 29th, and oh my goodness, is it a short one. I'll start with new releases on DVD and Blu-ray, and that list contains Annihilation, a sci-fi thriller starring Natalie Portman, Jennifer Jason Lee, and Gina Rodriguez. A biologist signs up for a dangerous secret expedition where the laws of nature don't quite apply. Annihilation is rated R. Swinging by New Release on Digital Video, the one title there is Love, Simon, a romantic comedy starring Nick Robinson, Kenyon Lonsdale, and Catherine Langford. A young gay teen takes a novel approach to coming out to his classmates. Love, Simon is rated PG-13. Now, of course, there were a couple other titles on digital, Wrinkle in Time and Tomb Raider, so that's not the only one, but I really wanted to highlight Love, Simon. Now the world don't move to the beat. Just one drum What might be right for you May not be right for some Moving right along to TV on DVD and Blu-ray The title there is Different Strokes Season 8 from 1985 Starring Gary Coleman, Todd Bridges, and Conrad Bain The final season What you talking about, Shout Factory? Conrad Bain, Gary Coleman, Todd Bridges, Danny Cooksey, and the new cast member Mary Ann Mobley bring the adventures of Arnold Jackson and the entire Drummond family to a close with the final season of the hit sitcom Different Strokes. And you can complete your collection of one of your favorite childhood TV shows with this two DVD set from Shout Factory. The final 18 episodes of Different Strokes feature the same big laughs and heart for which the series is famous, but this time they include some special appearances from a variety of noteworthy guests, including Forrest Whitaker, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Clarence Clemens, David Pamer, Robin Givens, and Dana Plato. Wrapping up the home entertainment slate, which I told you was short, because here we are at the end. I have Blu-rays from the past. And this week, I bring you Midnight Cowboy, 
a drama from 1969 starring Dustin Hoffman, John Voight, and Sylvia Miles. Joe, a cheerful rube from Texas, moves to New York City to pursue a career as a male prostitute, but instead he spends a hard winter helping a tubercular con artist he meets on the street. Midnight Cowboy is rated R. After a brief break for about a shameless podcast cross-promotion, the Weekly Podioplex will return. So how would you describe a podcast like The Shared Desk? It's a podcast that took its sweet time to do a promo. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think that goes without saying. I mean, you could say The Shared Desk is a podcast about collaboration, because that's what we do. Well, the, wait, 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 wait. There's a lot more to The Shared Desk. You got our Loot Crate looky Lou. Oh, what's in the box? And then what we're doing when we're not writing, usually it's pretty nerdy. Nerd! And then there are the drop-ins. Has the whole world gone crazy? Yes, there are drop-ins. And we love having guests on the show. It's the shared desk after all. And if it's Katie or Lauren, you get some lovely singing as well. So find The Shared Desk on iTunes, Stitcher, or at thesharedesk.com. The Shared Desk. Two writers. One podcast. Different different points points of view. view. Welcome back. Denise is putting the final touches on her quest, her her adventure she just had. Uh, So she doesn't have anything for the Quick Flux this week. So that brings us to the end of a new edition of the Weekly Patio Plex. On June 7th, 2011, the first edition of the Weekly Patio Plex premiered on the Chronic Rift Network. And let me tell you, the last seven years have been a blast. The last two with Denise on board with the Quick Flicks have been especially fun. And that's why we're taking a break, honestly. I mean, we're not ending the show by any means. But instead, we're trying to help this thing grow and breathe a little bit. Next week's edition will be the last one before we put the show into dry dock and start our refit. We're going to do a little bit of of housekeeping, a little moving around, getting a better show out for you. We hope you'll like what we have in store when the show returns. That said, we're still here for one more week. So if you want to discuss anything you heard on this week's edition or on the show in general, we would love to hear from you. You can surf on over to the Chronic Rift homepage at chronicrift.com. And leave an audio message right there on the website using your microphone. Just click the widget that says send voicemail and follow the prompts. You can also write an email or send an mp3 to weeklypodioplex at gmail.com or even go short form with Twitter. The Chronic Rift is chronic underscore rift. The Weekly Podioplex is weekly podioplex. Denise is Riley James Keith, all one word. And I am Womprat99, like the creature Luke of Bullseye in his T16 in Beggar's Canyon. You can give the Chronic Rift a thumbs up on Stitcher Radio, leave us a review on iTunes, and you can find the Wikipedia Audioplex and the Chronic Rift on Facebook. The usual disclaimer applies, of course. If you leave us feedback, you may hear your words on a future edition of the Wikipedia Audioplex. Take a moment, stop on by, and see what other shows the Chronic Rift Network has to offer. The main show has made a comeback in 2018 and is offered weekly via Facebook Live on Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So grab a cuppa and join in the fun or download the audio version later in the podcast feed. We also explore our favorite aspects of genre entertainment with the Batcave podcast, the newly reformatted OSI Files podcast, the G2V podcast, Generations Geek, presenting the transcription feature, the Dan and Travis show, the Sci-Fi Diner podcast, Doctor Who and Mr. Drew, the home game show version podcast, and so much more. If you have a Roku player, you can treat it like a time machine with the Chronic Rift's Roku channel, where you can find episodes of the Chronic Rift's adventures in the 1990s when it's a public access television show on the New York City airwaves. No Roku, no problem, because John is also uploading those episodes to YouTube, Facebook, and Archive.org. This show is also taking a little trip through time as well. I'm going to be posting the episodes from the last seven years on YouTube on the Weekly Patioplex's YouTube channel. I'll be doing that while we're doing the refit. So if you want to relive some of the past adventures, you can do so. Check us out and find the culture in pop culture. If you're interested in more of my adventures, take a quick trip to my blog, Creative Criticality, where I'm watching every episode of Doctor Who from the very beginning of that franchise and reviewing those tales in the Timestamps Project. 
This week, I am continuing the 25th season with The Seventh Doctor and The Happiness Patrol. And you can find that review and so many more at creativecriticality.wordpress.com. And you can also find Creative Criticality on Facebook. Denise can also be found on the internet at Accessories Not Included, where she talks about her writing, reviews books, and offers her services as an artist and a cover designer. And you know the story. I tell it to you every week. Just check out Creative Criticality's logo. Check out some of her other work, and you'll find out she does good stuff. You can check her out at AccessoriesNotIncluded.com. You can also find Denise's art on our Instagram account, Layman's Terms. That's L-A-Y-M-O-N-S-T-E-R-M-S, where she is celebrating the month of May with mermaids. Now, I realize that the month of May is almost over, but the pictures are still there, and they look really awesome. It's 31 days, 31 tales, kind of like Inktober, but instead it's Mermaid. If you decide to pick up any of this week's new releases, want to do it through our Amazon store. You get the newest entertainment Amazon's low prices and high quality service, and each purchase you make to that store supports the Chronograph Network. Your support helps to keep us on the air, and we appreciate your consideration. Look for the links to our best bets and the network store in our show notes, or click the Amazon box on the website. The Weekly Patio Plex is a Lucky Shot production and is produced by John S. Drew. On behalf of Denise and John, this is Michael Faulkner. Thanks for listening. Until next time, their adventures and drama, comedy and action, worlds to explore in the depths of film. So get some popcorn, find your favorite seat, and enjoy the journey. That's a wrap!